Welcome back to Andrew Says, I am your favorite 19 year old Scandinavian YouTuber. You know we had to talk about this when we couldn't make it through the week without it. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Misogynist comedians can stay out of Rosendale. That's apparently in Boston or a suburb or something near Boston, alright? A woman who owned a comedy club actually shut down a comedy show because she thought the, the jokes the comedian was making were too offensive and sexist and racist. Of course. Now, I'm not going to read it all completely in order. I'm going to leave some stuff out, but it'll be funnier that way. So just just believe me, okay? Trust me on this one. If you're watching me, you got to trust me. So it starts like this. The comedian emceeing a 10 p.m. event got off to a bad start by trying to crack a joke about his segregated audience. There were two black men in the small crowd of all men. Of course it was all men. So that's not that funny so far. But then again, we're reading some of these jokes as hearsay from somebody who doesn't like them. Then over the next 40 minutes or so, she said she cringed listening to a number of this bitch jokes <laughs> and finally had enough when one guy told a joke about how he couldn't understand why Uber fired him for making women customers ride in the truck. <laughs> come on. Shelly, come on. That's funny. That's funny. I'm sorry. Even in text, re the fact that somebody wrote that is funny. That, she said is when she realized, wait a minute, I own this place. Sitting at the sound table at the back of the theater, first of all, who's... <laughs> what owner does that? She hit a button that rang a loud bell, walked to the front, and announced the night was over. The fact that she has a bell just goes to show you she's been waiting for this for however long she's owned the club. <laughs> One day I'll get to use this bell, and it'll be my time to shine. <laughs> Uh, announced the night was over and that she would give refunds to the four paying customers and the 13 people, other 13 people in the room were friends of the performers. Four people she's doing this for. Not in my club. <laughs> now, if that was it, that would be a funny story, okay? But she just keeps getting wrecked. It keeps getting better. She says, quote, it's not okay and it's... It's not who we are, she told the audience. Then a guy in the audience asks, uh, is this a joke or is this part of the act? <laughs> Pong, that's her real last name, Pong said she chose Roslindale for deliberately, very deliberately as a site for her 49-seat theater to get away from stuff like this, even though she knows she could have made a lot more money someplace like downtown. She opened her own comedy place just to police people's jokes, apparently. I'll take things that insane people do for $1,000, Alex. Shout out to Alex Trebek. This is crazy. She says that she wants a space that is inclusive, not just for audience members, but for comedians in a business traditionally dominated by men. Pong said there's a place for subversive humor, but male comedians punching down with old and tired domestic violence jokes are not what she wants at her theater. No woman in the world would have wanted to stand in that room last night, she says. No, you wouldn't want to stand in that room last night. And are Uber jokes super old already? I mean, has it have people really already retired Uber jokes? I don't know. I'm not a comedian. I just play one on TV. She said that after she shut things down, most of the people went across to the street to another bar. She followed them over and talked to the paying customers to explain why she felt she had to close down the performances. Amazing. She said one of the paying customers was a BC student, I think that's Boston College, and that, quote, it broke my heart to think that he might think that punch down humor like this, like going after women was okay. Quote, the comedians never acknowledged me. <laughs> you think that making jokes about women is okay? How dare you not acknowledge me? Uh, of course they didn't. <laughs> You just ruined their set and their night out with their friends. And you're like, I can't believe that when I followed them over to where they were going, they didn't acknowledge me. Unbelievable. Could you just imagine being one of these comedians, though? First of all, it's probably, I'm guessing it's an amateur night. There's 14 people there. Four non, four paying customers that weren't their friends. So there's just a few people and you're like, sweet, I got a show tonight finally. And uh, let me get a bunch of my friends to come. This will be fun. We'll go out after. You get a fairly decent Uber joke out. And then someone <laughs> literally sounds an alarm. 
and comes out on stage and kicks you out. This is unacceptable. Get out. There will be refunds. And you're like, okay, this is crazy, but let's go out and enjoy the rest of our night. Let's go to another bar. She follows you around and then tries to give you more shit for the rest of the night. This is an insane person, a heckler who bought a comedy club just so she could heckle people and have her voice be the one that wins because usually a heckler is the one that gets kicked out or made fun of and then follows them around to heckle some more. And then I'm going to lift up my microphone and then it didn't stop there. That's right. This video is still going. (laughs) She goes on Twitter to brag about what she did, you guys. Courtney Pong. Tonight I shut down a string of misogynistic stand-up comics. As in, I walked on stage in the middle of them talking. This is like rap lyrics. <laughs> I walked on stage in the middle of them talking, addressed the audience, offered a full refund, told them it would not be tolerated here, and pulled the show and its comics from our theater immediately. Lights on, go home. And then possibly... The greatest line anyone has ever tweeted. I have never felt more alive than right now. (laughs) I don't know how this is real either. I'm sorry. Oh, I noticed you... What? This is the thing about the tweet. I noticed that she didn't mention that she rang a bell, that she stormed on stage after ringing a bell. There's only four people in the audience who played. And she also didn't mention that she followed them across the street to complain to them more. I've never felt more alive. I've got to go on Twitter. They didn't even dignify your dignify your appearance with a response. That's what they said. What did she say? What words did she use? They never even acknowledged me. <laughs> and I've never felt more alive. I've just saved the souls of four people. I can't believe that somebody actually said this. And what happened? What after, after all this? She did get a ton of retweets, if you can see that. But I went to go and look at more and try to pick out some of the best replies. And she deleted her Twitter. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. Patreon, Andrew says, Vesby, follow me. Have a good Thanksgiving. Post? What's after the day? Boxing Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? <laughs>